as mentioned in the slides, the application service is really the code that is going to be, let's say, invoked from the client, so in our case, our Angular code, to basically perform operations on the application. Now, where are we going to place those application services? I hope you remember from the previous module that there are already quite a few application services built into ASP.NET Zero, and they are located in the application project. This is the project where we are going to create our own application service. Now, if we take a look at one of the built-in application services, for example, let's take organizations here again, then we see the organization unit app service, we see that this has an interface. Let's first create the interface. Now, the interfaces don't get created in the application project, they get created in the application shared project. So in here, I'll create a folder called Phonebook. And in there, I'll create my app service for persons. So I'll add a new class, iPerson app service. This of course needs to be an interface rather than a class. On this interface, I'll currently create one method. It's going to be a very simple method that is going to return all the people and all the personal instances that is. I'm going to, as you can see here, be using a couple of types that I haven't created just yet. Now for all the communication between my client and my server, I'm going to use DTOs. DTOs are data transfer objects. There are pre-built classes that will be used to return the data that the client needs or that the client will be sending in the case that it's a parameter. The get people input is a DTO that will be used by the client to pass data via the request. The person list DTO is the opposite one. It will contain the data that is sent back from the server to the client. So we'll need to create those DTOs first. And they are also going to be placed inside of this application shared project. So in here, I'll create a new folder called DTO. And in there, I'll create my new classes. So I need to create the get people input, which will contain a filter basically allowing the client to filter what type of persons we want to retrieve. I hope you remember from the demo application that you could also filter. Well, that's this value that we are going to be sending in. That's a request parameter for the server to know what the client wants. Let's make this class public and I'll bring in a filter property. Next, you also need to create the person list DTO. Also class that needs to be public, of course. Now, as you can see, what am I returning here? Well, I'm just returning the name, surname, and email address. Now, in this case, this is very similar to the person class, but imagine that we have a lot of extra properties on the person class, but we don't need to return all of these when we are just returning data for a list. That is why we limit the person list DTO to those fields used, well, in the list representation for the person instances. Let's go back here and bring in the correct using statements. There we go. It's still complaining about list result DTO. That's actually a built-in class of ASP.NET Zero. So let's bring that in as well. The list result DTO is a pre-built class that comes with ASP.NET Zero that makes it easier to return a list of other DTOs. That's all it is. Now, maybe you already know that when we are using DTOs and we use entities on the other end, we will have to do mapping. And we'll have to do mapping in quite a few places to go from the one type to the next. Now, of course, you can write that yourself, but it is a very tedious code to write. So instead, what we'll do is we'll use AutoMapper. And we saw already in the previous module that ASP.NET Zero uses AutoMapper quite often. Now, we'll first need to let my application know which mappings we'll need to have. Now, there's a class called the Custom DTO Mapper, which already contains a lot of mappings. And we'll add our own mappings to that class. The Custom DTO Mapper is located in the application project. Here you have it. In here, I can now add my own mappings. Now we'll need a mapping between the person class and the person list DTO. Well, that's a pretty simple mapping because the properties have the same names. So we don't need to add a lot of extra configuration here. We do need to bring in the correct types. I have added already a couple of other mappings for DTOs that we'll use later in this demo. Now, while we're in the application project, we can continue creating our actual application service. So let's also create here another folder called Phonebook. 
and in there I'm going to create my app service. I'm going to call it, of course, person app service. Now this class, which is of course again a public class, will need to inherit from the Phonebook demo app service base. That's a base class that comes with ASP.NET Zero. Secondly, I also need to bring in the interface that we just created, the iPerson app service. Now Visual Studio is still complaining because you haven't implemented the method that we created on that interface. Let's do that next. Let's take a look at the code I've just pasted in here. First, my person app service is going to make use of the repository, the iRepository in person. That is going to be injected using constructor injection, as you see here. That is going to be also the helper to let us talk with the database. Then we have the implementation for the get people method. That is accepting, of course, the get people input and is returning the list result TTO of person list TTOs. Now the I repository is a generic repository that already contains quite a few implementations. For example, here I'm using the get all method. Secondly, I use the dot where if, and that's an extension method that actually comes with ASP.NET Zero. It will actually perform a filter if the passed in value does not evaluate to null. Finally, we use the object mapper here to map the people into a list of person list DTOs. And that's going to be what we are returning. Now do make sure that if you still get errors at this point, you take a look at the using statements you see here on my screen, because they can actually cause some problems at this point. Now I can't run anything at this point just yet. We don't have the view that works with this app service just yet. So the only thing I can do at this point is do a build to make sure that we haven't made any mistakes. And that seems to be okay. I have a successful build.